Welcome back to the Cross Border Interview Podcast. Today's guest is Calgary City Council candidate for Ward 12, Teresa Hargreaves. Teresa, thank you so much for doing this. Thank you very much for having me uh, on your show as well. Teresa, my first question as always is, where's your sense of duty to serve come from? Well, being that I'm truly a born native Calgarian, um, I saw that the city grow, of course, throughout the many years of being here. And I personally feel at this time, we have to find new and innovative ways to attract new businesses, developments, programs, and opportunities to get Calgarians working again, uh, maintain, create, and create the vibrance and the energy that the city used to once have and try to find that uh, what we're known for as a very high energy, young, energetic city with very good talent to draw from into talent pools. One of the ways you can give back is the political route, and you've chosen that here in 2021. Uh, you did run in 2017. What made you to jump back into the ring in 2021? I just saw no change again from what we had left off in 2017 to 2021. There's slight changes, you know, but not enough to really make an impact. Uh, it just seemed like the city was just plugging along as the city just plugged along. Again, our energy, not just the energy sector, but the energy and the spirit of the city going downtown as I work downtown almost every day, except for when pandemic time, just it was just very almost dead feeling. It didn't have that warmth, that spirit, that energy that we're known for. And it was just losing that. And I felt that our city was losing our identity. One of the areas on your website, uh, Teresa for Ward 12. Uh, Wixsite.com, which will be linked in the, uh, the show notes below. So I highly recommend everyone go out and check it out. And I, I love that you mentioned this because this is a, a key thing that I've, uh, I've tried to get candidates to open up about is um, you, you want to, uh, and this is the very first goal that you've listed on your website is to develop and implement plans to create growth and opportunities for young generations. While I'm not sure if that was a conscious choice to make it number one, it is seems to be a reoccurring theme that the youth of Calgary is leaving. You want to bring jobs and opportunities for them to stay here. So why is that a priority for you? Well, that's a priority because number one, I have a young son and a young daughter-in-law. However, they're not here. They chose to go to uh, BC to go to university. We're not sure if they're ever coming back. And the youth, uh, you know, they're our future. They're our future taxpayers. They're our future families. They're our future. You know, as we get older, we do need people here that in Calgary to stay here and want to stay here. We don't want to end up being a ghost town. And, you know, we have all this expansion and all these houses right now. But what happens if we don't have people attracted to come here or, or even our own families wanting to stay here? Uh, currently, I'm a fifth generation Calgarian. So that's quite a quite a lot to stand for and say for, for for my family. Now, how do we how do we do that? How do we bring opportunities and what opportunities are you looking at particularly to bring to Calgary and bring as the next councillor for Ward 12 to City Hall to ensure that we do have that retention of the youth, but also retention of all residents, because I'm seeing an exodus of people leaving the city and going to other places, because like you said, there's no opportunity here. Correct. Um, well, I'm a business owner myself, and I do a lot of work with uh, the various uh, secondary post-education institutes, and I utilize a lot of work experience programs that they, these institutes have. And I hire these students, even if it's on a four month contract or three month contract as, a, as part of their practicum. And we work together between the universities and the secondary schools. And we can also utilize that working with the work experience programs we have within the high schools. I actually did a high school program when I went to high school as a work experience program. So this is how we can get people educated, learning job skills, understanding, putting their education and their training together, and maybe even hopefully hiring them as a great employee for your own company if you can, or within the city, maybe uh, we can actually hire them as practicum students within the actual city of Calgary and hope that they can actually transition to a role there. One of the things that any candidate should do and should be doing right now as we're in the middle of a campaign is talking to the residents, talking to the voters, talking to the people of Ward 12 or whatever ward you're trying to represent and listening to their concerns. 
What are you hearing from the people of Ward 12? Currently right now, I'm just hearing a lot about the infrastructure that we have. We have a lot of traffic in our area. It's quite condensed area. And you know, how, do we, how can we make that traffic better? How can we make it flow? You know, and then again, also our infrastructure as well. We have a problem with that. And little, we have addressed a lot of it. It's starting to get better, but we do need a lot of um, recreational space for our children to grow up and, and even for families. Like, you know, even if you want to fly a kite, that type of thing, we do, it's a little better than it was, but it, there's still opportunity for that growth. Sustainability, uh, better cost housing for the area. Uh, the other thing is that, um, Oh, I had it on the tip of my tongue. Oh, we need um, better security uh, in our area, like policing services and that, that type of uh, first responder action. We have um, our police department comes from Mindapur, which is like 20 minutes away. Oh, wow. Um, and last election, we had 350,000 registered voters. So we're like a small little city without a police department. One of the... Uh as you've just mentioned, you ran in 2017. Are are the concerns that you're hearing today in 2021 the same that you heard in 2017? Or have they changed? And is there ways that you can address the concerns that you're hearing at City Hall as the next councillor? Well, they haven't changed much, in my opinion. The only thing that finally we got some approval on was the Green Line, which is finally something that's moved forward, which is a great thing. Well, but we'll see it when it happens. Hopefully <laughs> Which we'll, we will it. be talking about a little bit uh, later on, but continue on. Yeah, so hopefully that will um, help out with our residents for sure in the area. Uh, it hasn't changed much, especially our policing department um, and our safety of our area. We have uh, quite a few sour gas wells or oil wells within kilometers from our area. And I don't know if you remember way back, probably almost 10 years ago when Compton tried to get some of them back and running and they did the radius report and it took in almost all the high river, uh, put the hospital, almost South Calgary, that whole area. Well, those wells are now orphaned and we need to work with um, the, the um, Orphan Well Association to get those reclaimed and cleaned up right away and are back on production because if they're producing, they, there's less chance of them actually having issues. Uh, people don't know, but some people may know, but sour grass, if it's left just standing there and it's left in the pipes, these sour gas will actually uh, corrode the pipe a lot faster than just the, it just being pumped and, and being worked. So if those went, you know, do, do, do my residents or the residents of War 12 or even south part of Calgary, High River, Oak Tokes, those other residents even, uh, Ward 5 for Rocky View County, well, do they do understand, you know, shelter in place? What do we do? First thing you're going to do is you hear something going on, you're going to go grab your dog and your kid. Yep. And as soon as you go outside, you could be dead. So we, we need to work on that. That was part of my last election as well, is to try to make our area safer. And uh, I have had conversations already with the local fire departments, and they're totally, un totally aware of that. And we've worked on some state programs as well together uh, that uh, a colleague of mine and I have been part of uh, to educate the fire department in those kind of cases. That's awesome. That's awesome to hear. I want to dive into some of the issues that you're hearing, but also that's on your website. Like I said, the link will be in the show notes below. Let's start with safety because uh, I, I, I was, I'm pleasantly shocked to hear that there's no police department down in your area and for a population of 350,000, that seems like a very big void of uh, police presence in an area. Well, there's probably police presence, but uh, a headquarters should be there. How Correct. do you see uh, yourself working with the next council to ensure that we do bring uh, a, a department down to your area, but also ensure that yet again, I hate to say this because it seems to be a reoccurring theme with all the candidates, that we don't spend money on things that potentially cost money. And during this economic downturn, during the pandemic recovery, we don't have the money to throw around. Why is it important for you to address this issue, but also how do we bring it to a vote to make sure that we get the safety and security for the people of your ward? 
first of all, we have to look at the budget. As you know, that um, we're all outsiders. We don't really know what their true real budget is. And I do know that they have kept cutting the police to budgets uh, from what we hear in the media. You know, how can we look at that? We have to try to look at something. Can we not utilize existing city buildings that we have within our ward and put in a side station per se? We don't have to build a brand new brick and mortar fancy station. We have quite a few um, like, sort of, they're supposed to be made up where there was a ambulance, fire and police in some of our fire stations and halls. And I believe there's one small little kind of pop in office down in the Seton area, but we should be able to have a police station within each fire hall within our ward so that we can have access to, to boots faster in the ground if need be. We, you know, we do see police presence in the area, which is good, but is it enough, right? One of the big things that I hear from residents that I talk to here in Ward 10 where I'm located, but across the city, is safety and security. And you talked about it briefly there for a second there. And I want to talk about it because um, the issue of defund the police has been a big uh, topic of discussion around uh, the city hall. Uh, for an area of the city that does not have a, like you said, a brick and mortar uh, headquarters for a police department, how do you address uh, policing in today's society when you don't have a headquarters to potentially keep your residents safe? How do you address that issue with people who are saying defund the police? Well, we have to look at it again. They're not the ones lit. Those people may not be living without the police services within their area. You know, like again, ours are coming 20 minutes away from Minnipur across 22X right now. And the bridge is all taken apart. So maybe we're 30 minutes now, you Which, know, so. Uh, I appreciate you saying that because I, yet again, I, I am shocked that part of this city, and yet again, I, I tried to learn a lot about the city, but I'm shocked to hear that there's a part of the city that does not have adequate funding for police services, but thank you for addressing that. And you're the first yeah. Ward 12 candidate to mention that in the show, so <laughs> thank you. No, um, thank you. The next one I want to talk about is traffic. Traffic, traffic, traffic. Um, there has been... Uh, as you just as you mentioned earlier on, but the green line is officially a go. That yes. means absolutely nothing in the world of actual governance because until the shovel's in the ground, I don't believe it. Um, yes, exactly. When the province and the federal government announced that they were officially funding the uh, green line, what were you hearing from residents of Ward Twelve? They actually hadn't said too much of it. I, I, they're probably just as much as what we you and I were just discussing. We'll wait to see when it happens because it's supposed to have been promised a long time ago. And then, you know, last, like earlier in the, the winter slash spring of this year, it was more the line going from downtown up to the Northwest. So again, the South part of Calgary was left out in the dust, so to speak, even though there was some action and activity being happening in our air, like towards our areas, like not quite down toward deep South, but through Ogden, like other wards, and then finally getting to us. So now they're they're just like us. We're just waiting to actually see it to believe it. But in the meantime, like we do have all that land allocated. If we can't get tracks on the ground, can we not at least get high speed buses from the next the last train and have an allocated right away? Have the buses go down that and emergency vehicles go down that traffic area until the tracks get into the ground. Is there frustration with City Hall with the residents of Ward 12 of how long this project has taken to get going? Because it seems, and yet again, I, I'm relatively new to the city, so I have not been here for as long as this topic has been discussed at City Hall, but it seems it's been longer than I've been born, and I was born in the early 80s, so, and I'm joking <laughs> about that, but is there frustration within Ward 12 that this project, while it's great, we need it, it it, like you said, they are pushing the goalpost down and down and down. And until the shovel's in the ground, Ward 12 just doesn't care because they've been, and I'm using this word uh, inappropriately here, but dicked around. Yeah, we've just been, okay, well, one day it's yes, and then the next day it's no. But I do know Shane Keating, that our current incumbent, he, you know, he has tried quite hard to, to get this going. I think he just had his hands tied quite a bit with... Um, you know, with the, with the federal and the provincial governments as well to try to get this moving and going. 
finally that's coming through and you know at least that he can pass the torch on to me and say okay now it's yours <laughs> it's, try to move this forward if you can Teresa um yet again I'm still going through that list of because I, I love when uh candidates talk about what they're hearing from residents because then it gives me an ability to talk about what you would do you talked about um a green, a recreational spaces and green spaces this seems to be a very popular topic that a lot of residents are talking about, especially during this pandemic because of mental health and getting out yes. and doing something because everything's closed. During the post recover uh, in a post recovery city of Calgary, mental health will be a big topic that you'll have to deal with because uh, the dealing with uh, getting people out, getting people moving again, getting people to feel safe in their own communities. How do you see uh, green spaces helping the mental health and also helping the people of Calgary recover from this pandemic? Well, when I, I walk every day, my husband and I, we walk every day. We have a huge pond that we walk around in our area. And it's like just a water storm pond, but still it's beautiful. It's set up as a little park and green space. And, you, you know, it's got a toboggan hill and everything else like that as well. But I do find just even walking every day and getting the fresh air, you feel that freedom, you know, all those, that constraint that wearing your mask and going to work and dealing with people, you know, at your job that, you know, are in the same boat as you are and feeling very closed in, you know, going outside just even for a 20 minute walk gives you that opportunity to feel like you've got some fresh air and that you're free. And I feel the green spaces allow the children to feel they're free and the families to feel they're free, like the shackles are off, you know, and then when you get back to work and, and you're working back into it, wearing your masks and people are again around you and all that stuff, people are very paranoid still and, and that, that they don't, they don't feel they have their freedom. One of the big things about green spaces, and I want to get your opinion on this is while uh, densification is happening within our city, we are growing, we are building up instead of out. You can't create new green spaces in existing land that's already being developed. Um, at City Hall, uh, there has been a park that is being designated to change from a park to a, uh, a, a subdivision or housing complex. I, I don't know the exact details, I apologize, but I'm just trying to follow the details. Um, how do you ensure we protect our green spaces moving forward? Because like you said, for families, it is a avenue that they need and we need to protect the green spaces we have, but also grow as we grow our green, our, our city, we need to grow our green spaces. So how do you envision protecting the green spaces that we have? Well, we have to work with the developers, number one, and saying that, you know, we have to allocate so much as either put it in as a bylaw or make some sort of all allotment saying, you know, there's so much density and you need so much green space. And I believe there used to be a bylaw that we used to have a long time ago or some sort of um, allocation part that we had to say. I remember when we were first moving into Mackenzie Town and working with the actual home builders, that's what they were telling us that, no, that has a designated green space because of this and this and that. So we need to go back to those roots and say, let's look at this green space again and go, you know, are we allowing this much green space for the density that we're having in the area. One of the areas on your website that I want to talk about, and this is the part of the uh, conversation, we're going to be talking about you as the next counselor for Ward 12. On your website, you say, under your initiatives part, bring forth decisions made by the majority of residents, even if it means taking risks. I love that last part, taking risks. <laughs> What do you mean by that for the people who are listening, for the people of Ward 12, what does taking risks in a city council perspective mean to you? Well, it's like being a business owner and sometimes you have to take risks in order to get what you need for what you want. So it may not be the majority of the people, you have to take that risk. If the majority of my constituents say, we want this, for example, I don't know what that might be. You have to go for them. You're working for them. They're your, basically your boss. So you have to say to them, but you might have that minority of people that may not want that or they don't care. So you may upset that little pot too, but at the, main, the main focus is, is working for the majority of the people and get into it. It may take that risk to get that job done in order to satisfy or help, help the constituents out of War 12. You have to take that. 
while you were there to represent Ward 12, you were elected, elected uh, on October 18th to represent the people of Ward 12. You have to address issues that are citywide as well, Calgary as a whole. Now, right. it, it goes back to the statement of the majority. While the majority of people might want a an arena deal downtown, the people of Ward 12 say, it's not going to affect me. Why are we spending all this money? How do you see balancing that, the needs of the many for the city against the needs of the few of your ward? Well, you also have to look at it, again, you go back citywide as well, and you are working not just with your own count, you know, your own ward, you're working with other uh, councillors and other areas as well. Like, so there's like, what, 14 of us, 14 councillors, plus the mayor, plus you know the man the general manager everything else and then also too you also have the city of calgary employees who are also your team people yeah. don't realize it but they're also your external arms so you have to look at it what's the best for the city what's going to create jobs what's going to bring energy back into the city so that we as a city can grow as a whole and be very vibrant again keep our youth here again so it kind of goes back to the original statements where you and i are at where how can we sustain calgary keep our property values up, keep, keep, you know, keep our housing market strong so that uh, residents here feel they have a place to call home that, that's worth something for them. So it may go against what they want, but in the whole, it keeps the, the city healthy. The worst thing a politician could ever say is no, uh, especially yes. when dealing with residents. Sometimes you will have to say no, though, because sometimes a project will come to you or an idea will come to you from a voter that says, hey, I want my street paved because there's a big giant pothole and I want the whole street uh, ripped up and you will have to say no because of the financial cost. Are you comfortable with saying no to A, your re the voters, but also to the, to the other councillors at City Hall? Because sometimes you will have to disagree with them. Correct. And it, that you get that every day in business as well. You do have to say no and pick your priorities as well. I did read a book recently and they said it was more better to be more honest and say no and address the reason and give a statement and a reason as to why no, than try to brush it off. So the best thing is to say no and also advise them as to why you're saying no. So they're, they're not going, oh, well, that's just an abrupt no. It's no, but here's our reasons. Um. Yes, I, I literally had a question and I was about to ask it, and I <laughs> forgot it because you answered my question with a with a perfect a, a statement. But the the next council will have a lot of work to deal with, a around transparency, around collaboration, and around um, the narrative that council isn't working. You talk to residents today, and you hear that this council is secretive. This council yes. doesn't get along with each other. This council doesn't like to communicate because they want to, they go into their in-camera sessions and they, yes. they do all their decisions there. How do you envision being more transparent with your ward, with the city of Calgary's residents, but also to be more collaborative and make it a more collaborative workspace for all of uh, Calgary to say, hey, we have a city council that actually respects us, but also respects each other and they're doing their job and they're not bickering anymore. Well, this will come back to my negotiation skills as a landman and my communication skills with stakeholders and relations with, uh, as a project manager. You need to have that transparency and you need to have really good communications. The biggest part is I'm gonna start doing is a talk with Teresa show uh, for my ward so that the constituents and my and the Ward 12 residents have an opportunity to talk to me one-on-one -on -one through Zoom or through Teams or whatever platform we set it up on and, tr and try to get them involved. What, what's their voices? What do they wanna hear? What do they wanna be? I saw that with um, a lot of people who ran in the last election, we got together right after 2017 election and we started working towards why is there such transparency? Why is there closed door sessions? And why are there a lot of late night closed door sessions after hours? So that's not what people want to hear. Yes, you do have some stuff that's not, can't be released to the public at that moment because there might be a negotiation or a deal going on that is not part of it. Or because just like in a business world, you do have deals that not every employee is going to understand or know. But once they're 
they're finalized and done and you can actually state what they're all about state the true facts you may not give the full details of the the deal because of confidentiality but state what the true high level facts are that you can address and and set forth i i remembered my question and we'll jump back to this before but i want to ask this question as a business owner you know the struggles that businesses are going through due to this pandemic um some businesses have struggled horrendously because of this pandemic. They've been open, they've been closed, they've had to lay off staff, they've had to rehire staff. And it's just not a uh, sustainable method of doing business with everything that was going on. As the next city council can, as the next uh, city can, uh, councilor for Ward 12, how do you envision a post recovery city for our businesses to thrive? but also to work because we have seen businesses close up shop across the city and it is horrendous to see. So how do you envision taking your business skills and business background to city hall to advocate for those businesses who are struggling? Well, first of all, my business is in the oil and gas industry. So we've been struggling. <laughs> so you've literally done two. Double, di double hit there. So, okay. <laughs> yes. So prior to the um, pandemic, I, as a business owner, I personally had to go back to school and learn more new and innovative ways to be creative, to keep my business going. Uh, and um, I took on project management because I did feel that a lot of my oil and gas experience and projects were going into a project management style type business. So now I also can do project management as well as oil and gas land uh, and negotiations. However, you know, depending on the business owner, they have to truly too look at inside and say, is there a course or is there a class or is there a way I can make myself more innovative? Some people get stuck in their ways that this is how they've done it. This is how their mom and dad have done it or whatever, especially if it's a family owned business for many, many generations. You know, have they looked at different alternatives? Maybe we as a city, you know, a city can look at some programs that can say, you know, here's some ideas, here's some thoughts. Here's some test markets. A uh, long time ago, I was working in 2017 with the city of Calgary Parks and Recreations, looking at certain um, food buses and food trucks within the parks. And we did quite a few in Ward 12 as well, and it worked quite well, but they were just a test market. And then the next year they found that it was quite successful, but they had to send it out to not just one truck anymore. It was actually sent out to bid understandable because that's the way the government works the bidding process is the bidding process and unless you change it by, by law you can't do that so i i appreciate that um I, i'm going to follow up that with that question with how do we ensure in a post-pandemic calgary that residents don't, don't get left behind because the frustration right now is the service level for what they're what people are paying in taxes is not equivalent to what they should be getting uh, on my street alone, there have been for sale signs go up and I talk to my neighbors and they say they're leaving Calgary because the service level two tax base is not what it should be. They're going to other cities that have taxes as well, and they'll probably learn the deals that they have. But how do we ensure that all residents don't get left behind in this post pandemic recovery? Well, first of all, again, it goes back to looking at our taxes and where are they going? Because again, that's a lot of that secretive behind closed doors things. But I do know that we need to enhance our communication as a city. And we have not done a good job in the past with this, with our federal government, our provincial government, and our local municipalities that are around us, like uh, County of Rocky View. They're a huge county that are our neighbors. And then we have Foothills County to the south, which is also our huge neighbors and we're not working with them. So if we can start opening up that communication line better, we can start working with them and maybe there's opportunities that we can start sharing some of the resources that we have. Like why would Rocky View County, that's just east of us again in Ward 5, not have a, say a garbage service together with us and we can they're sharing us and splitting that cost together. So our tax pools can be based together. The second thing is we need to work with the provincial government is that um, City Calgary does their taxes in November and the provincial government sets their taxes up in May. We're six months behind. 
So how can we start aligning our taxes? Do we as a city say, okay, let's start looking at our taxes when they come out in May for like June type of thing or do it April or type of thing. So we're not behind all the time. And we know what the provincial government's going to give us for funding. And that way we can look at what we're working with for our tax base. And again, a lot of our taxes are not just sent to Calgary. People all think that our taxes are sent to Calgary. So much of our um, household taxes or residential taxes and uh, even business taxes are sent to the province of Alberta. And then and they distribute some of that back. And I know that the city of Calgary does have a, a motion or a, a request to ask for a quote unquote fair deal. And I use that term lightly because that is what it's, I think that's what the, the, the counselor did call it, a fair deal from the province. Are you in favor of asking for a fair deal from the province to ensure that we do keep more of the money that Calgary collects from our tax base in Calgary? Well, especially if we do need it, like, for example, are they going to be paying for our police funding when it's coming out of a city budget? So I think we should try to keep as much as we could here in order to help for our, our needs and services that we require here. But again, I, I don't want to say, because I know most of my competition or other counselor opportunity um, opponents within Ward 12, they're all saying reduce taxes, reduce taxes. Out of my whole life living in Calgary, I've never seen anyone ever reduce taxes for, for our, our residential homes. And I'm not sure how they plan on doing that without decreasing our property or taking something away from us. So if well, we can at least try to keep taxes at bay, then at least it's a little better of an opportunity for us to work with that. I am so happy you just mentioned that because as a business owner and as a business owner myself, I know inflation happens. Cost of living, exactly. cost of doing business goes up. I don't care who yeah. you are, it will go up no matter what year it is. Even in a pandemic, it went up. Yeah. I, I, I'm getting very uh, 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 animated here and I apologize because I'm so happy that someone's actually willing to say that. How do you see keeping our taxes low, but also acknowledging that things do cost more from year to year and making sure what the services and the value that we are doing for the taxes that we're collecting is still the same, but also increasing our city to make it a better place to live with the taxes that are coming in. Well, again, let's try to keep it uh, even par if we can, or if we do have a small amount go up, but most likely look, over the last couple of years, they haven't really gone up that much. And for what we are receiving for services, if you start looking at other cities um, and other provinces, we're not off. We're not all that bad off when you really, really think about it. I have a piece of property that's um, within the county of Vulcan. It's uh, over four thousand dollars a year. I do not have a paved road. I do not have water service. I have no sewer service. I have no garbage service over 4,000 a year. So I, I, when you look at a, that, it's a lot. I, as a former city administrator, uh, administration uh, from a Northern community here in Alberta, I know city of Calgary's taxes are low. When I got my first tax bill, when I moved here, I went, what is this? Why is there so little numbers here? So right. I, I do agree that our taxes are lower compared to municipalities around us and even in Alberta. But the narrative is still we have high taxes. You can talk to as many Correct. people as you want. And there is, that's the narrative. And I don't want to keep on hitting this home because I, I, I'm just, I'm having a great conversation with you and I'm just enjoying it. <laughs> You're willing to be frank about this and I'm so happy about it. Um, but I, because I'm cautious of time as well. Um, I want to jump to my next segment is I want you to put on your magic timekeeping hat and put yourself on October 19th, October 19th, 2021. You are the counselor designate for Ward 12. What is priority number one for you, Teresa? Safety. That is my top priority and getting the youth to work. How do so you accomplish digging into the budget? That? The first thing I got to do is dig into the true real budget. See what is on the table right now as it sits as of today and what they passed last year. 
because again, don't forget it's November, we're working on the next new budget. So how can I create and work with something? And by and then, I have to start digging into it and dissecting it. And the next budget is a four year budget. It is a strange budget process that the city goes through, but I think more municipalities are moving to it. Um, you will have a lot of work ahead of you the moment you get elected because you were elected on October 18th. The yep. first council meeting is the first week of November and you are expected to pass a multi-million dollar, if not billion dollar budget within the first few weeks of being the new councillor. Correct. You have, a, you have a lot of work ahead of you. Exactly. Uh, are you ready to hit the ground running and how have you prepared to hit the ground running as the next councillor? I'm prepared because I, it's like, it's, it's my spirit and my heart and soul of this city. Because again, this is where I was born. This is where my family's raised. This is, this is where I feel I belong. It's my spiritual connection and I need that to be there. It needs to be strong. And I need to be strong for not only Ward 12, but for the city itself. And again, it has to go back to what is our true real budget? What does that look like? You know, and, and dig into it properly and dissect where we can and try to work with the, the provincial government and say, how can we align this better? Again, we're passing something in November, six months later, oh, here's your money. And you're, now you find you're, you're a billion dollars short, for example. Yeah. So then um, you're looking at cutting back and then you look like a, a silly person. <laughs> for that um looking forward to four years from now as the uh, first year incumbent uh counselor what would be the metrics to ensure that you say you would have a good first four years what would you say is the priorities to ensure that if you decide to not run for re-election in four years time you say i got x y and z done and i'm happy i got them done because they have made ward 12 better but they have made the city of calgary also better for me, it would be this uh, for sure the safety. That's number one. And if so I can would that, get that be one, that would... adding adding a actual police department in the uh, south end? At least, if it's not a true police department, at least more police services and opportunities available to the Ward Twelve residents. Uh, we actually have an old building that we would make a good opportunity to create and put into a, a police department if we wanted to use an existing abandoned sort of speak more brick and mortar building but if not if need be at least let's try to get more presence within our fire departments within other brick and mortar buildings and try to get that going like it may have to be modified again i don't know the budget but let's try to get something more boots on the ground more visibility more opportunity and again trying to create not only just the youth my main focus is the youth because they are our future but the all um very high um, educated people not to leave Calgary. We, we had, because of the oil and gas industry, there is such talent and amazing amount of um, educated people that are out there that are unemployed and working, for example, McDonald's because they can't get anything else right now because the industry's slowed. And, you know, or do they have the right programs in place to re-educate them and, and put these people back to work as something very capable to sustain their family and live the lifestyle that maybe not that they were old, old accustomed to, but adjusted accustomed to. So they're not losing their homes and walking away. Understandable. But in order to get to year four and to get to day one of October 19th, you have to be elected on October 18th. Take two minutes. Right. Talk to the people of Ward 12 on the show who are listening right now and tell them why you should be the next city council uh, councillor for Ward 12. Well, number one, I have experience from running last time. I got second next to the incumbent. So that shows that my heart and my soul and the opportunity for me to be the person for the next council it is there. I'm showing dedication. I want to be dedicated to my presence of within War 12 and as well as to the city. So the dedication is there, the drive is there, the needs there. Um, I'm a really good listener and a really good communicator and I would like to keep, continue to make sure that openness is there and try to work with all people within not only the city but within War 12. And in order to do that, you need volunteers, you need support, you need help. How can people get Perfect. involved in your campaign? 
Um, they're, they're, uh, I have on my website that I have a volunteer form. They can have um, pick out what they need, whether it be helping me deliver flyers, door knocking, uh, even sponsoring me with some events because I am uh, like to do a lot of community events, being into the community quite a bit. I used to teach baton within the community for free. So that's kind of fun. We had little mock parades, all that fun stuff. So I'm a very high community or person as well. So therefore I would like to keep that as part of Hockey Calgary, part of the Blackfoot Hockey Association. So for me and the scouting within the community. So for me, it's very important to keep community feeling and community people together. So I do need people to help with signage to, you know, if they fall down, can they go pick it up, <laughs> that type of thing. Put them up, take them down, take a little area. <laughs> So in order to, uh, for my listeners and my viewers, uh, Teresa's link to her website, her Facebook page, and her Twitter will be in the show notes. I highly recommend that you get out. And if you're in Ward 12, look up Teresa, research all the candidates, get involved in this campaign, because this is the future of our city that we're talking about today. And I highly recommend, and this is my big push for everyone who's listening, get out and vote. Vote for the person you yes. believe is the best person who is going to be the best counselor for your award, but also for the best uh, person who be you believe to lead the city. Teresa, I want to thank you so much for doing this. Greatly appreciate it. No, and thank you very much for your time and with this. And uh, again, uh, to the voters as well, the, the, do your homework and do look at what people have to say that are within, you know, your, your wards and, and for even for the mayor, do your homework and, and, uh, do what you can, you feel is best for who you want to vote for, but do get out and vote because you don't have a voice if you can't vote or don't won't vote.